Here's everything you need to know about the Archer Queen. She has the same movement speed as the Knight. She has the same attack speed as the Knight. She also has the same collision radius hitbox as the Knight, as well as the same mass as the Knight. Mmm, it's an orange juice. She deals 225 damage. That means she's going to one-shot Spear Goblins and Stab Goblins. But she's going to take two shots to kill Firecrackers, two shots to kill Archers, and two shots to kill Spirits. This means that Furnace is going to counter her. Because she doesn't two-shot the Fire Spirits, they're going to make it, and they're going to jump on her before she can even take it out. Just a really good counter. So it goes without saying that she's going to one-shot skeletons. But during her invisibility, she deals plus 200%. That means that's three times faster attack speed. When she connects to the tower, she's going to deal 1,300 damage. But I'm the queen! But with the invisibility, she's just going to deal way more damage because of that three times speed. And she's nearly going to take it out. During her ability activation, she's actually going to be able to get seven shots in. So with that in mind, Goblin Gang is going to get wrecked by her just because she can dish out seven shots during her invisibility. This is where Skeleton Army does a really good job of distracting her and taking her out just because there's so many skeletons and she can only take out half of them. She's going to be able to three shot the Mother Witch, three shot the Magic Archer, and three shot Skeleton Dragons. Basically everything that's fireball she's going to be able to take care of. This is perfect for her ability activation. It's because she can target six different things without revealing herself. And an Archer Queen that's in the front is going to be able to go invisible. She may not deal all the damage, but it is worth using that one elixir so you can put a tank behind her and just tank everything and just deal a billion damage to the tower. It's ridiculous. She will be able to one-shot Barbarians just because they are fireballies. But having five Barbarians, she's going to have to shoot the Barbarians 15 times. So if you don't have anything else to support her, her speed just isn't enough to kill all five Barbarians and she's going to get countered. She's just really good at taking out really big targets with her invisibility. Just so much attack speed taking everything out. She's going to be able to four shot the units that are traditionally fireballed like Mega Minion. Hunter's going to take four shots to kill. Musketeer's going to take four shots to kill. Bandit's going to take five shots to kill. In this case, her invisibility is not going to help defending your tower, so you're going to need to drop other units. And even if you try and time the invisibility, she's still going to get dashed on. Her invisibility is not invulnerability. You could actually do something like cart the elite barbarians, and then psych, she turns on her invisibility, and now they have to walk backwards, and the e barbell only gets one hit on the tower. And up against hog rider decks that have something like a Tesla, she can bypass the Tesla completely and just connect to the tower. It ain't much, but it's honest work. But her invisibility isn't everything even with her invisibility she's gonna die to splash units she'll be able to six shot a baby dragon which is perfect for her invisibility it's the same with the ice golem six shots and it's dead she does have a shorter range so it does take a bit longer to connect to the tower but it is a lot of damage if she does connect but you can react to a pocket archer queen really easily even with the invisibility the ice golem's gonna tank six shots slow her down and she's only going to need to get a few shots instead of the 2,000 damage. Lumberjack's part of the Baby Dragon Ice Golem gang too, where it does die in six shots. Mini P.E.K.K.A. dies in seven shots as well. That's perfect since her ability lets her get up to seven shots. Mortar has the same health, so she's going to be able to take out the Mortar pretty quickly. She does a surprisingly decent amount of damage. She's not going to be able to totally stop a Hog Rider, but it will only get one hit on your tower. It's almost the same case with the Ram Rider. If you can plant it just in time, it's actually better with the Ram Rider. If you plant her a little bit early and block the path, Ram Rider is not going to get any hits. Dark Prince, Balloon, Battle Healer, Hog Rider, Ram Rider, they're all going to die in eight hits. So they're kind of in the same category of health. And then with her cooldown and her ability, it's just so, so threatening. They've got to use Zap or something to take care of her because if they don't, your tower's gone. That's obnoxious. I love it. I love it so much. One thing though, she's not very strong against the big Mama P.E.K.K.A. Just because the Mama P.E.K.K.A. can tank a lot of shots. Unlike the mini P.E.K.K.A. Bowler's going to do a really decent job as well. Bowler is going to deal a really decent job as well. Just because it, it can tank a bit for the queen. And can kind of knock her back. Bowler can kind of knock her back. He's a little slow, but it does the job. Speaking about knockback, Mega Knight wrecks her. It's going to knock her back when she's invisible. And then she's going to be able to tank the shots and take her out. And now you've got a Mega Knight that can counterattack for your next push. The Knight's fairly tanky as well. So he can absorb some shots. But the Ice Golem's going to do a bit of a better job, even though it tanks two less shots. 
it slows her movement down and that buys you time from her connecting to the tower. Interestingly enough, the Dark Prince can actually survive a decent amount of shots just because the shield does tank two shots. And if you time it just right, boom, it connects with the charge. And then she connects to your tower for some big ouchies. If they do uh, an Archer Queen, you're gonna definitely need to do a Prince. The Prince can tank just a little bit more than the Dark Prince can and just completely take her out. Lightning's gonna take her out. But OJ, I've left the building a 10 million elixir push and now my lightning's not gonna kill her. Then you can use Fireball and Arrows and it's gonna take her out. Pocket Archer Queen just isn't that threatening. If you see her, even if they activate the ability, Fireball's going to be able to take her out completely. And if you don't have Fireball, Snowball's a really, really good knockback and it slows her down. So she only gets a couple hits in your tower. That's two elixir for six. She's very versatile, but she does take two shots to kill each minion. This is more so good to know if there's some minions coming towards your tower. She will be able to mostly stop the minion horde from connecting. She is able to two shots to kill the guard shields, so you can actually use guards to kind of stop her. The guards did walk upwards and the princess tower took them out. So it's almost better to put guards lower down just so that it distracts her so the guards aren't crossing the bridge and she's using all of her arrows. Guard appears there, does one shot before it crosses the bridge and she's only gonna get one to two shots depending on your timing. Electro Giant does is an especially good job at taking her out. If she activates her ability, that just means she's gonna die even faster. It's so satisfying seeing her counter by Electro Giant. Five Elixir to deploy, one Elixir for invisibility. It actually makes sense to use an eight Elixir Electro Giant to defend a Pocket Queen. And now you can counterattack with this two Elixir Electro Giant, kind of. She's just so versatile in a lot of decks. Even though she's in the front, I can put my Piglets behind her and then turn invisible. And now the Piglets are tanking for her. She takes out the flying machine. My Piglets connect to the tower and I have a full health Archer Queen connected to the tower. She is a little bit lighter. So you're able to put units in front of her and it's going to push them forward. So that Piglet just decided to tank for her. Activates the invisibility, takes out the Barbarian, targets the Magic Archer, then locks onto the tower for two hits. Oh, so good. It's really deceiving when she has low health. You can even pressure the other lane and they're gonna defend the higher health lane. But with her invisibility, that's 1600 damage on a queen that was pretty much already dead for the cost of one elixir. Barbarian Barrel does a surprisingly decent job at stopping her as well. With the Barbarian just right on her tail, looks like this person didn't want to activate this ability until after she crossed the bridge because it does have a 15 second cooldown. And then they tanked the Valkyrie when she activated the ability and countered the queen completely. Poison's actually a pretty reasonable counter towards her as well. As long as you can get some hits on her while she's in the poison, she's gonna die. I can't stress this enough. Even if she lives with a sliver of health, throw everything at her. In this case, Barbarian Barrel. That invisibility has the potential to deal 2,000 damage. Barbarian Barrel's not bad, tanks a little bit, but when she connects in the tower, you can still place units kind of on top of her. Dark Prince is pretty good. It pushes her a little forward and the Dark Prince's shield can tank two of her shots. And just for fun, let's make a minor Ice Golem deck that tanks for the Archer Queen. Guards will counter her, Snowball and Fireball. Oh my goodness. What are they doing? We're gonna Fireball that out. Countered the Bandit and the Archer Queen. Trying to bridge rush me? What in the world? I mean, if they want to <laughs> freeze that, sure. I know he's going to have a... Uh... Oh, I knew there was going to be a Skarmie somewhere. Activate the invisibility. She's locked on the tower. Full freaking health. That knockback in the log's not enough. Oh, so good. I'm going to do an ice golem in case they have Skarmie or anything crazy like that. Eh. You know what? Forget this. I am rushing Archer Queen in the other lane. There's nothing they can do about it, I hope. Oh yeah, Archer Queen locks on, let's get it. What? Eh. I'll take the victory. Champions are really fun. I love how the abilities make the game more dynamic, but they do cost elixir. And these champions weren't designed to be stronger than any other rarity. You don't need champions in your deck to be better. They're not supposed to be stronger than any other rarity. It's just kind of cool and the abilities are fun and they get released really broken. So I did a boost it and max her out, but <laughs> so who's keeping track of any of that? If you found this even a little useful, I appreciate you using code OJ. We get a small kickback from that. Thanks for watching. Her invisibility just 
He wigs out the Sparky and the Sparky is just stuck. What do you... You guys saw that, right?